Hey guys, welcome to the next video in this channel. So, what's the deal, right? Why am I wearing a black shirt today? Well, let me tell you a little story <laughs> while I open my... Uh... So, I was preparing laundry today and uh, we were doing our laundry and um, the weather here changed like radically. It was really, really sunny. That's why we were doing laundry because we wanted to place the cloths outside for them to dry. And suddenly we had like a thunderstorm and then like super heavy rain and hail and everything. So it was crazy, it was crazy. So unfortunately I don't have my uniform right now. I don't have my uh, next to a branding shirt. So I apologize. Uh, this is gonna be the only video probably that you're gonna let me see. You're gonna see me with like a non uh, next to uh, shirt. Uh, but yeah, so let's get to it. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm still on the process of recording the Marmoset videos. So this next couple of videos, which is going to be the one that I'm recording today and the, the ones from uh, the next couple of days, are going to be some quick tips about topology. Topology is one of those topics that's uh, very mysterious at first. When you first start learning 3D, you don't really know why topology is important. So I want to show you some couple of nice little tips and tricks that are going to be uh, helping you create some very nice um, geometries and models. And now this applies to anything. It could be uh, for Maya, for Blender, for anything. So it's, uh, it's like a universal concept about uh, 3D modeling. So uh, what is topology? Well, topology is just the organization of your mesh, your squares and your triangles in uh, any given uh, model that you have. And there's a couple of rules that we like to follow in the 3D world. The first of them is we always use quads and triangles. At render time, every single thing that you have is going to be triangulated. So even though we see this as quads, Maya at render time is going to see this as triangles. However, for our very, um, let's call it very limited human mind, it's very difficult to see a shape like this and understand how things are like properly flowing. So that's why we like squares and boxes because it's it's easier to think uh, with like just those four shapes rather than tra uh, thinking about like uh, triangles all, all of a sudden. So uh, the way in which you organize your, your quads and your triangles, that's what we call topology. Now, why is topology important? Well, the main reason why topology is important is due to something called deformation. And that means that you're so, uh, every now and then you're going to have objects that are going to be deforming, especially when you're doing animated things. So uh, topology, for instance, if you're doing 3D printing, which I'll show you in, in a second, um, you don't really need to worry about topology because you're not going to be deforming the object. But if you have this cylinder right here and you want to bend it, you're going to need a proper uh, subdivision of, uh, of, of quads and triangles to make sure that the uh, deformation that you apply to it, like here, let's say it's just like a nonlinear bend, it deforms nicely, right? Like we create this very nice C shape. Uh, so that's why topology is important. And I'm going to do the exact same uh, example, but now with a, like a bad topology. So let's say I have this triangle and I don't, or this triangle, this cylinder, and I don't care about topology and I just start adding like angles and things like all around the place. And I'm like, yeah, look at me, mom. I'm, I'm 3D modeling. I'm super cool. It's like, no one's going to know, right? Like you see this and you're like, yeah, that's a cylinder. All right. But then you see the topology and it's like, oh my God, that's horrible. And not only is it horrible, it's not going to deform properly. So if we go here into not deform and bend and do the exact same thing, you're going to see that the deformation is not going to be, it's, it's nowhere near clean as what we have right here. Okay, so that's one of the first reasons. Topology is important and it's, uh, it's, it's necessary to have properly so that the formation works in the best possible way. The second reason to, to do proper topology is uh, due to something called angons. And usually, if you have an object that has a face with more than four sides, like this one right here, which has six sides, it's very difficult for softwares to properly do all the math and all the things that they need to do to properly render, modify, and deform this sort of shape. So any face with more than four sides, we call an angon. And it's very important that we do not have angons on our geometry. I'm going to show you a very, very quick little way to uh, see if your geometry has angons. It's a very nice little trick here inside of Maya. So if you have like a very complex model and it's like super dense and you're not sure if you have angles or not, just click your object and you're going to go into mesh. You're going to go into cleanup. And instead of selecting this first option, which it says clean up matching polygons, you're just going to select, you're going to select the second one, which is select matching polygons and which matching polygons we're looking for. We're looking for faces with more than four sides. And if I hit apply, it immediately will change my selection to faces and it will highlight the faces that have this sort of effect. If I were to select the cleanup, the only problem with cleanup is it will do this. It will try to triangulate. And as you can see, it really doesn't work the way we want, right? So that's one of the reasons why um, uh, we, we don't use this cleanup uh, matching polygons and we'd rather just select them and then manually clean up the, the things. 
So another thing that you need to take into consideration is the proportions of your squares. This is a little bit more important for ZBrush and for sculpting that, uh, than it is for deformation because you can actually get away with uh, a couple of things. But if you, if, if you have a mesh like this one right here and you try to bend this compared to like just a regular plane, you're gonna see that even though we have a squares and uh, and like just just yeah just the squares on both of them. The deformation is going to be completely different, and the reason why that's happening is of course because the the way they're distributed is is different. So if I bend this thing right here, you can see that we can get this very crazy shape. And if we try to do the same thing here with a nonlinear bend, and just move the curvature here and try to do the same sort of twist, you're going to see that we get this sort of error. Why? Because there's not enough geometry here to properly do the twist. Now, there might be a case where you need this sort of shape, where you have like this hard edge in there. That's fine. But usually we try to keep everything like really, really balanced. Another thing that we try to keep uh, clean about topology is the resolution. Like you usually don't want to work with an object that's super, super high in resolution. Like if we were to go and say, hey, I want this sphere to be a hundred subdivisions. And the reason why we don't do this is because we have something that was created, I believe in Pixar. I need to research my history a little bit more. But um, uh, Ed, Ed Catmull, which is one of the founders of Pixar, uh, he developed this sort of technique called the Catmull Clark. He developed it with a, a colleague, uh, last name Clark, I believe. And uh, the Catmull Clark subdivision is when you do this, when you smooth an object. And it it calculates mathematically the distance between the edges and the vertices and gives you a smooth surface. And this uh, Catmull Clark subdivision is uh, present like everywhere. Let me show you real quick. I've been, I've been learning Blender, by the way, guys. Uh, maybe if you guys are interested, I can do like a quick, like my experience with Blender so far. It's been, it's been fun, to be honest. Like I, I've liked doing Blender. So I'm just going to create here a mesh. I'm going to create this uh, UV sphere, which is like our traditional sphere. And you can see that it's very similar as in as in Maya. The only thing I'm, I'm still like always struggling with is the camera because I'm used to the, to the Maya controls. Um, and in Blender, you guys know that we have these uh, sort of uh, modifiers, which are uh, things that apply on top of the object. And we have this thing called the subdivision surface, and you can see here that it's called Cadmut Clark, based again on that uh, algorithm or, or like mathematics that this guy's created so that we can see uh, like a smooth surface without actually uh, having the geometry. So this object, even though it, it seems like it's super smooth, it's actually not. It's just like this very rough sphere, and we're just seeing a, a visualization of how this would look once it's subdivided like uh, several times. So this Cadmut Clark thing is the exact same thing that we have here inside of Maya when we press number uh, three. So that's why topology is really important because if we're going to be doing subdivisions, we need to make sure that that subdivision is very clean and moves in a very nice way. And I can show you a very simple example of how that can break very easily, like a cone. You might think, well, this is a basic primitive from Maya. Why can't we use this cone? Well, first of all, we don't have squares. We have a lot of triangles, as you can see here. And second of all, we have a very big angle right here. So if I were to press number three, you can see that uh, the uh, Cadmus Clark subdivision is trying to figure out how to like properly do this thing, and and it's not it's not working. So what would be my answer? Well, I would need first of all to convert this into workable topology. So I'm going to go into Mesh and hit Triangulate. Uh, but that's going to give me like a very bad result, right? I would like to have like something on the very on the very center. So that's why where uh, where I use my poke tool, which is going to create a vertex on the center and then connect every single edge. I would then probably like grab all of this edge and give it a bevel with a small fraction and like two segments because we know those bevels are going to hold the edge a little bit better. So now you can see that the edge is looking very very nice. But what about the like the tip here? What would I do? Well, one very cool trick here. We can't do an inserted loop because uh, insert edge loops work with with a face loop uh, with uh, like squares, but we can use a cut tool and just cut really close to the tip right there, and that's going to be more than enough to hold the the position. So this is a perfectly workable geometry because we have this edge loop there holding the tip, and uh, and we get this very nice shape. So that's uh, the basics of uh, of topology. Now, um, I mentioned that I want to show you some uh, very nice tricks. So today's trick, because remember, these are just short videos, just a quick overview of the things, and tomorrow I'll show you more tricks. I'm going to show you how to do a... Um, I was watching my chess videos. I love chess. I've been playing chess for a, for like a year now after uh, Queen's Gambit, and uh, it's very fun. So I'm going to show you how to do a cylinder cap. You might wonder, well, well, cylinder caps just super easy, right? Like, well, not this one, like, like just like from from a plastic ball, right? And there's a little bit of a problem with topology, especially in game topology. So I want to show you this. Uh, and the problem is the following: let Let's say they say, "Hey, Abraham, please model a like just a a, a Coke cap, right? Like a like a bottle of uh, soda cap." 
Well, if I just do this, the problem is that the silhouette of the object, as you can see, it's only 20 sides, and it's um, that's very, uh, how we would say, very segmented, right? Very fragmented. So, so it doesn't look as nice. It doesn't look as smooth. You can see like the the corners right there. Even if I turn this on. It's gonna it's gonna try to smooth them, but it's not really working. So some of you might say, well, why not? Instead of having a cylinder with 20 sides, let's do 50 sides. And yeah, 50 sides is gonna give us a super super smooth cap. It's gonna be really really good. But the topology is also gonna shoot all the way up. Right now we have 200 triangles, where on this one we only had 80 triangles. So on game optimization, we need to think about how to properly optimize this thing. So here's the trick that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna grab a cylinder. And this is something that you can do with a lot of things. I'm using a cap as an example, but you can do this with a lot of things. And I'm going to add a 40 subdivisions, which is double the amount of 20. So that's going to give me a very round effect, as you can see here. And then on the height subdivisions, I'm actually going to say, uh, or sorry, on the cap subdivisions, I'm going to say two. Because I want to have a little bit of a, of a border here, this one right here. Okay, now I'm going to push this guy outwards like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one edge loop and then not select the next one or one edge. So I'm going to select one of each. I'm not sure if these are shortcut. There, there has to be some sort of shortcut to, to do this in a, in a more like in a faster way. But I, this is the one that I know. So I'm just going to quickly select all of these guys. Oh, I messed up somewhere. Because here. So there, 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 and there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse those edges. So I'm going to say edit mesh, collapse. And what's going to happen is we're actually going to keep the very round like border on the object without adding that extra loop here on the inside of our of our of our element. And we can even minimize this uh, more. Like I can I could grab this guys right here. This is something that we do a lot in in game optimization when the polygon is getting a little bit too big and we want to keep the silhouette because the silhouette is very important for us because it's going to catch like that very nice lighting information. So if I were to collapse this guys as well. Mesh display, let's go, ba, 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 ba. where is it now, mesh tools, ah, it is mesh collapse, there we go. You can see that now we've created this shape that has a very round edge, but everything's triangle up here. And some of you might be wondering, well, is this going to work? Is this going to, like, is this functional? From a game perspective, it is, as long as this object will not deform, okay? The topology might not look the prettiest. I would actually leave it like this because I think this looks a little bit better, even though we can save a couple of triangles from uh, minimizing those ones. Uh, but let's say like this guy, we're, we're just going to have like this cap. So now instead of having uh, 200, we only have 160. So we've uh, removed uh, 40 edges. But think about like, uh, I've seen things where, where you have like a very, like a very cool robot. Let me look at like a concept real quick. Like I've seen this kind of things, right? Where there's a lot of uh, like circular stuff all the way around. If you were to give all of these guys like the, the top resolution that you might uh, need, then the object would be super, super dense. But if you use this sort of trick where you collapse and leave a couple of triangles helping you hold this silhouette, that's going to uh, save you some triangles. And this is still a workable geometry for games, not for movies. Because if we try to do the Edmund Clark thing, you can see that we get this spiky thing, uh, the smooth subdivision. So this would only hold in games. I could, though, if I wanted to keep this or give this a little bit more roundness, I could add a bevel with like two segments. And even this would work perfectly for a game because we're saving some um, some triangles in here. Here, though, uh, since we have some more or some extra resolution, I'll probably do the, the thing that we did before where I would just collapse this kind of thing. So edit mesh and collapse. And we'll have this sort of shape. Because at the end of the day, this is just a cap. It's completely flat. So having this sort of topology where everything is a triangle is no big deal. Um, some people might even go all the way to going into this inner guys and just deleting them so that you have squares. But these are like very ugly squares for me. Other people would like to stitch this in, in a different way. But uh, again, as long as you can reduce the amount of polygons, then you're going to be in a good position. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one, guys. So we we took a, uh, we, we saw how to do uh, this sort of like a, a simplification. I'm going to keep one further down here and we saw the, the bending of the tube and we saw the uh, the importance of um, the subdivision, the, the Cadmod Clark subdivision. So hopefully with this, especially for all of, the, of you guys that are new to 3D and are uh, just learning the, the basics, hopefully you know or you can appreciate how this thing works. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about edge flow and edge flow is really, really important. So I'm going to be showing you some very nice tricks in, in, that we can use to modify the edge flow and make sure that our topology in any object that we model flows in the right way. So hang on tight and I'll see you back tomorrow. Wait! Before before I leave, 
don't leave don't click out just yet one final announcement today's video is the last or today wednesday when this video is up is the last day to submit your work for the first portfolio review uh we've been receiving some very nice work so we're probably gonna have a portfolio review weekend so uh saturday and sunday are both gonna be videos where we review uh objects for or or works from you guys and uh, so make sure to to check the description down here there's gonna be a link for google drive create a folder on that shared folder put your name on it and drop any sort of file that you want me to look at. It could be images, it can be Maya files, it can be ZBrush uh, C tools, like anything that you want me to check out, uh, we'll check it out during the portfolio review. I'm gonna try to go in order of uh, submission. So whoever submitted first will get a uh, priority. Uh, in case we get like a lot of submissions, so, but make sure to drop it there. And uh, if you like this content, if you like our videos, you know what to do. Make sure to like, subscribe, share. And now it is true. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.